thought about telling somebody that you know that you love them? Just so you know, love can be in a variety of forms. It can be familial, it can be like parental, it can be sibling love, it can be friendship, it can be a romantic relationship. Whatever it is, whatever you happen to be, tell someone you love them today. Because honestly, I think it'll make their day. I hope. <laughs> Hello everybody, this is that manga dude and welcome to another pickups video. It is officially going to be September. Or it is September. I don't know. It could also be a different month. But this is going to be everything that I picked up in August of 2024. I picked up a lot of awesome stuff because I had a lot of free time. Uh, and I also went on my uh, bachelor party because I am getting married soon. So very excited for that. That's its own uh, totally own thing. But um, I was down there. I managed to pick up some great stuff. And I also went on like a big trip by myself uh, while my fiance was on her bachelor party and picked up a ton of manga. So uh, really excited to show everything that I picked up. Up. So uh, yeah, let's get started right now. Alrighty, so if you've never been to a pickups video uh, from me, the way I always started is I always start with manga, like publishers that are either A, defunct, or B, I just did not pick up that much from. So uh, yeah, let's get started right now. So the first manga I am going to show off is going to be Vizard from Michihiro Yoshida. This was published by 8 ADV, this is volume one, and this is the only volume that they released, so, um, yeah, I don't know, uh, much about this series at all, uh, it just looked really cool, and I'm always a big fan of picking up series even when they're dead and stuff, but, um, looks like some pretty solid action across the board, and, um, yeah, I just thought it was cool, so cool to have it, and, uh, we'll probably read it at some point. Okay. Up next, I picked up from Bandai Entertainment, I picked up Eureka 7 Volume 3. This is original story by Bones, uh, manga is by Jinsei Kataoka and Kazuma Kondo, who is the mangaka group or duo, whatever you want to call them, from behind Dead Man Wonderland uh, and Smoke and Parade. So really happy to have this third volume. I've actually had a pretty easy time finding these volumes because a lot of the places near me happen to have these volumes, funny enough. So um, yeah, happy to have it and definitely going to be reading this series soon. All right, up next from Square Enix, I picked up The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses Volume 11 from Kome Fujichika. Uh, yeah, this is a series that I've been having just an absolutely fun time with. It's uh, just a really, really cute rom-com series following the story about these two kids here. Um, this guy is always like, has become friends with her and is totally in love with her. And she tends to forget her glasses, so she ends up doing just like uh, comically funny things like, oh, getting too close to him and stuff like that. So it's pretty fun. I don't know. I think it's really cute. And uh, yeah, it's just been a nice little read. So happy to have the next volume. Alright, up next from Denpa, I picked up Heavenly Delusion Volume 2 from Masakazu Ishiguro. I was not expecting to actually like the first volume, gonna be completely honest, because I did not like the um, their one-shot series Skygrazer very much, but I actually read the first volume and thought it was really good. Uh, so happy to have gotten this second volume, because this series appears to be almost impossible to find, not gonna lie, except for the newest volume. So really happy to have this, and it's in pretty good condition. I got it used. Um, yeah, definitely gonna be reading it very soon. All right, up next from Broccoli Books, I picked up these two volumes of Murder Princess from Sekihiko Inoue. This is uh, Inoue, excuse me. This is the mangaka behind the Comic Party manga. If you have ever read that, um, but yeah, I think this is only a two-volume series. Uh, I found it for pretty cheap at a book off, so uh, definitely want to check it out. Don't know much about it, but it looks like it's going to be kind of like an action series. And I just happen to really like the Comic Party uh, artist's. Uh, art style so happy to have this we'll definitely be checking it out have you read this before let me know down in the comments below all right up next from del rey manga we picked up school rumbo volumes five and six from jin kobayashi uh really happy to have these because the series is obviously um, out of print from what i could tell and obviously del rey i think got bought up by kadacha if i remember correctly so um i don't know if the series is ever going to get reprinted and maybe it will but at this point i'm happy just to have these and yeah in fairly good condition as well so definitely want to start reading the series soon i just know it's a comedy series and it has a really catchy opening uh, for the anime, so that's all I could tell you about it, to be completely fair. Alright, coming into our second section, we have ourselves the bigger publishers, uh, or the publishers I got more manga from. So, yeah, let's get started. We have ourselves Kadansha. I picked up the second initial D Omnibus. This is Omnibus 2, so volumes 3 and 4 I included this one with the beautiful car. Um, I don't want to name it, just in case I'm wrong. Pretty sure it's a... Mm, is it a Supra? <laughs> I know it's owned by one of, the, uh, one of the brothers, who is like part of the other team, not... 
uh, the team that uh, Takumi is a part of. But yeah, I love. I just I think Initial D is a lot of fun. I think it's a really great read. Um, and yeah, it's been translated extremely well into this uh, format. So happy to have this, and definitely we'll be talking about this in my next reading log. All right, up next, I decided to pick up the third volume of Otto from Amano Jaku. This has been a really fun um, Akira-esque, like, sci-fi action dystopian, like, uh, series. It's been a lot of fun. Basically, it follows a story about this girl and this boy that she meets uh, who ends up having, like, these powers. It's kind of, like, looks like it's, like, plants and stuff like that. Uh, and they're a type of these people called, like, Ottos, and they, uh, yeah, have all these crazy powers. So um, it's about him trying to escape, and uh, she's just trying to help as she can. So um, very interesting series. Series. I like the first two volumes. The art um, is pretty solid and the uh, storytelling is very interesting and I really like the pacing. So uh, happy to have this third volume. We'll definitely be checking it out soon. And last but not least from Kadansha, we have ourselves the Fragrant Flower Blooms with Dignity Volume 2 from Sakami Kami, a really adorable rom-com or what appears to be a rom-com slash romantic drama uh, following the story about these two kids here um, who go to differing schools that are completely different. He goes to like a delinquent boy's school and she goes to like a preppy uh, girl's school, uh, but they end up becoming friends and maybe something more down the line. Um, I really like I really like their relationship in terms of just like just the friendship in general. I think it's really adorable uh, and really fun. So definitely interested to see how the series continues. Going into Tokyo Pop, I actually got a couple of volumes, some new, some old, so I'm going to start with the older stuff. I picked up the first volume of Abeno Bashi, uh, or Aben Bashi, I don't really know if that's supposed to be an O, I think it's an O. Uh, Magical Shopping Arcade, created by Gainax, written by Satoru Akahori, and art from Ryusei Deguchi. Um, I don't know much about this, I know the anime is really popular from what I can tell, or like it's one of those like cult hits uh, currently, so I don't know anything about this, but it looks silly, it looks kind of fun, and I'm definitely interested to read it. Coming up next, I decided to pick up the uh, one and only volume of Daphne in the Brilliant Blue. This is from the creator of Kamikaze, also known as Shiki Satoshi. Don't know anything about this, but I've kept my eye on this one for a while because it looks like it's going to be like a really fun kind of like action just series. So don't really have an opinion on it because I haven't read it, but it looks really cool. I'm excited to check it out. And now from new Tokyo Pop, we have ourselves Watch Dogs Tokyo Volume 2 from Seiichi Shirato and Shuhei Kamo. The first volume was a lot of fun and super awesome. I've always really liked the Watch Dogs series, uh, at least in terms of what it could be. Never really liked the games that much. I played the first one, was pretty disappointed. I played the second one and thought it was kind of fine. Like, I never got super into them, but I've always been super interested in this series, um, just in general. So really happy to have this second volume, and I'm going to continue reading it. Hope we have a, continue to have a great great time. And last but not least from Tokyo Pop, I picked up the fourth volume from Since I Could Die Tomorrow from Sumako Kari. Um, really, uh, really solid, uh, just very, very good series, kind of like a, um, an adult drama following the story about this woman here uh, who's currently struggling with her health and she kind of is like thinking about what she wants to do for the rest of her life because she feels like she's just kind of been like a slave to the man, uh, just constantly working, never really thinking about like what would happen if she just died. Like would, would her legacy just be I worked all the time? So it's about her trying to like contemplate like, work with that while also meeting other people who are kind of struggling with the same thing. Uh, someone with a terminal illness, uh, one of her friends who is uh, feels neglected by her husband and doesn't know what to do. So overall it's just a really good series uh, i've been really enjoying it the art is definitely hit or miss i really like the covers but some of the internal uh some of the manga art is not necessarily the best uh, some of the perspective gets kind of strange and wonky and some of the characters go a little off model um but overall i've been really enjoying it so uh, definitely excited to check out this volume Coming in from Seven Seas, I got Young Miss Holmes, Casebook 1 and 2 from Kaioru Shintani. Um, I don't know anything about this, but I saw it and I thought it was really cool. Uh, I'm a big fan of mystery series, so if this is anything like any kind of mystery stuff, um, I'm going to have a, big, a good time with it. I believe this is supposed to be like his daughter, question mark? Uh, oh, sorry, her uncle. So this is, this is uh, Sherlock Holmes' niece. Uh, and it's about following her story as she like solves crimes and mysteries, I guess. So um, yeah, excited to check it out. I guess it's by the same manga as a series called Area 88, which I looked up and it was one of the first ever manga to be translated into English, which is really cool. So um, yeah, uh, interested to see how this goes, I guess. <laughs> 
All right, I'm next. I decided to pick up the first volume of Too Many Losing Heroines from Itachi, Takibi, Amamori, and Imigimuru. I was definitely super interested in reading this because I've heard the anime is fantastic, and I've always heard the light novel is really good, but I'm not a big light novel guy. So I uh, wanted to check out the manga, and hopefully it's pretty good. Um, the art looks pretty nice, and uh, definitely excited to check it out and see what all the hubbub's about. All right, up next, decided to pick up the first volume of This Strange House from Uketsu and Kyo Ayano. I've already done a review of this in the FBI, so if you want my full opinions on that, you can check that video out uh, right up here somewhere. Uh, or you can wait for the reading log for a good old-fashioned TLDR. But yeah, definitely was really interested in this. It looked uh, it looked to be pretty fascinating. Basically, it follows a story about this guy here who is like a writer of some sorts. Uh, gets contacted by a friend to uh, basically research into like this um, very strange house that he's trying to buy. Like there's like just like really weird design and stuff like that so uh kind of falling into like this giant conspiracy theory about what this home is actually supposed to be so um yeah definitely go go check the video if you want my full opinions on it and last but not least, I picked up the Concierge at Hokioku Department Store from Suchika Nishimura. Uh, really excited to have this. I've heard that it had a very successful movie. The movie looks awesome. Uh, I've never seen it, but yeah, I also did this one for the FBI. So if you want my full opinions on that, definitely give it a shot. And coming into Yen Press, so we have ourselves Volume 7 of Shy from Bukimi Miki. Um, been really enjoying this superhero series, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, had a hard time actually finding this volume in good condition, so when I did find it in good condition, I was really excited. So had to pick it up almost immediately because this is a series that I have just been thoroughly enjoying. Uh, every volume has been a really fun time, and I just love the characters, I love the art. It's just, it's a really good series. So if you like a superhero, if you want a superhero manga that's a lot of fun, definitely give this one a shot. And I finally picked up Call of the Name of the Night Volume 4 from Tama Mitsuboshi. I've talked about the series at length at multiple reading logs, uh, but it's been a long time, mostly because I just haven't been able to find this volume in good condition. Um, these series, these uh, volumes have been notoriously difficult to find uh, ever in good condition. Like, I just don't know what happens when they get shipped or whatever, but this is one of the most beautiful series that I've read in a long time. Has absolutely gorgeous art, a wonderful story, and uh, really sad that it's going to be ending, I think, in the next volume for English. So, um, yeah, uh, looking forward to it, uh, and hopefully it ends really well, because, man, this has just been a really great series. I just, I love it a lot, and the art is so, so good. All right, up next, I decided I was able to pick up two more volumes of Delicious in Dungeon, volumes three and four from Ryoko Kui. Super happy to have this because, man, finding these volumes have been nearly impossible. I will say I don't really like the inconsistencies in the printing color. As you can see, they're like different reds. And no, that is not just the lighting. That is actually what they look like. One of them is more of like that darker red, and the other one is this kind of like light brown. I don't know why they did that, but it is annoying. Uh, but I really like the print quality. The pages are really, really nice. It's really thick on here um the books are really thick as well so i don't know if they're using like better pages or if that's just uh, how it feels but really happy to have this series it's been a lot of fun i can finally understand what all the hype is about and last but not least for Yen Press, I picked up my, oh, my Atami Kun, Volume 1 from Asa Tanuma. I talked about this series in their most recent FVI as well. Um, but yeah, definitely go check that video out or wait for the reading log if you want my full opinions on this one. Alrighty, we are officially in the final stretch. This is the Viz Media section. I always pick up a ton of Viz Media stuff. Uh, recently, it's been kind of mixed, funny enough. Uh, I've been having uh, some other... Uh, like not series, but other publishers being at the end. But now we're back to normal. Viz Media is back here. So I'm gonna start off with the uh, like kind of random assortment stuff. So uh, first up, Inuyasha volume 10. This is the original print. Yes, this is the um, American weird uh, print where they had flipped it so that you read it like a American comic book. Um, yeah, just been really enjoying the series and finally found a volume 10 that's not completely mangled. Uh, and yeah, definitely excited to continue reading. Up next, I decided to pick up the first volume of Flowers and Bees from Mayako, uh, Mayoko Ano. This volume wasn't in the best condition, but it was like two bucks. So I was like, um, yes, I'm definitely going to pick it up because the series appears to be pretty rare. Um, this is the uh, wife, actually, of Hidaki, Hideaki Ano, who is the creator of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, so she is a fantastic mangaka in her own right. She's got a lot of great work. Uh, so definitely interested to check out this one and uh, see what it's all about. 
All right, up next, this is from the Viz Signature line. We have ourselves, I'll give it my all tomorrow, from Shunjo Aono. So, um, yeah, basically follows the story about this guy here um, who's kind of like down on his luck. He doesn't really know what to do with his life. He's just kind of going through the... Um, the, the phases or whatever, then suddenly it becomes like inspired to become a mangaka for some reason, but it's about him just kind of struggling with like himself and uh, what he's doing with life and trying to be a role model for his uh, 17 or 18 year old daughter. I forgot how old she is. Um, but yeah, he's just kind of just like trying to, he's just struggling through life, especially with like an over overarching grandpa who's kind of a butt. Um, but yeah, I really like the first volume. I will be talking about that in my reading log, but uh, definitely interested to uh, continue reading this series. Up next, here you see me, Volume 2 from Keigo Shinzo. So happy to have this. This series is so amazing. I absolutely loved that first volume, so I had to pick up the second volume. Look at the beautiful visuals. They're so good. Uh, but basically, if you don't know what the series is all about, it follows the story about this guy here, um, who now who lives in this like uh, old home that was gifted to, or, uh, kind of bequeathed, or whatever you want to call it, to him uh, by a grandma that he had befriended and uh, was like really good friends with until she passed away. So now he owns his house, and uh, yeah, she she, he uh, takes in his cousin um, who is now going to school and college and it's about them kind of just like learning about life and trying to figure everything out while she's struggling like with imposter syndrome and trying to see what she wants to do with her career while he's also just kind of going through the motions but uh, trying to uh, figure out his grief about uh, losing one of his like good friends uh, the grandma that you meet at the beginning of the series so it's really really good it's absolutely fantastic I love that first volume and super happy to have the second one right now all right, up next, I decided to pick up the third volume of Black Lagoon uh, from Ray Hiroe. This is a really fun, awesome action series uh, about a bunch of mercenaries that do a bunch of crazy stuff. <laughs> That's about as much as I can say about it without truly spoiling it, but it's a lot of fun. I read the first volume and I thought it was super action-packed. Love the visuals, so definitely excited to keep reading it. All right, coming into Shoujo Beat, we have ourselves volumes 11 and 12 of Kimi ni Todoke from Karahoshina. Woo 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 woo! Super happy to have more volumes in the series. It's a really great Shoujo series. I love it so much. Um, and uh, happy to see that uh, the anime is back and heard it's really good. So um, yeah, really excited to keep reading this and uh, hopefully I will be able to keep finding volumes. All right, up next, I decided to pick up the fourth volume of Strobe Edge from Io Sakisaka. So I decided to read the first volume recently, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, but basically, yeah, it follows the story about this girl here, uh, who's always, who has had like a really close childhood friend, but sort of kind of like falls in love uh, with this boy who's like the bad boy slash the popular guy. Uh, and yeah, it's about her just trying to figure out her emotions about how she truly feels about all these people. Um, it's messy, it's dramatic, but it's a lot of fun. I've been having a great time with it and definitely interested to read the next volume and have this volume. Okay, up next, I got this volume early. Let's do it already from Aki Kusaka. This is a really silly shoujo series. It's a great rom-com, but basically follows the story about these two kids here. Uh, she is like kind of like more of like a delinquent girl, and he's more of like this like um, prop, prim and proper uh, family of like, uh, or he's part of a family that's very, very like um, tied to money and stuff like that. So uh, they've officially started dating, but they have all these kind of like rules that he has in place. So it's about her trying to like open him up kind of like Get him to do stuff, like let's just hug already, let's just kiss already, blah, blah, blah. So just like what a normal couple would do. It's so funny. I love the first volume and definitely excited to have the second one early. All right, up next, I decided to pick up the seventh volume of My Special One from Momoko Koda. I've uh, been really enjoying this one. I think this one's been a lot of fun. I actually prefer this series over her other one, which I think is uh, no Longer Heroine, I believe is what it's called. Um, this one has been a lot more fun in my opinion and a lot less, uh, like cringe i guess the main character is more likable <laughs> is the best way to put it so yeah definitely excited to have the next volume and uh, can't wait to read it all right up next another one that i got early i got last quarter from ayazawa early this is a um another series by ayazawa who's the mangaka behind nana as well as neighborhood story um have not read this just yet but man the visuals look fantastic and this is just a really really cool print love this cover and stuff um definitely going to be reading this for the fei in september so look forward to that 
All right, coming into uh, Shonen stuff, we have ourselves I Want to End This Love Game, Volume 3 from Yuki Domoto. Uh, pretty solid rom-com about these two kids who are playing this thing called The Love Game, where they're trying their best to get the other to confess that they love each other or get flustered. It's pretty silly, it's pretty fun, um, but you're always rooting for them because they definitely like each other and they just won't admit it. So it's about their stubbornness and stuff like that. It's pretty fun. I don't know. I, I like it a lot, to be honest. All right, up next, I managed to find two more volumes of Naruto that I needed. This is volumes 59 and 60. Um, so if you're wondering why I have been slowly but surely picking up this series, even though I've already fully read it, um, it's mostly because, like, um, I want to be consistent with my releases and have the uh, the old the older Shonen Jump logo instead of that newer one, uh, just for consistency's sake, because I have them all looking like that. So um, <laughs> trying to find them with the old logo has been actually surprisingly difficult. Uh, but I managed to find a store that's selling them for uh, half off the cover price. So I uh, picked these two up for now, but definitely going to be going back to that store and hopefully they still have them and I'll continue to be picking up these volumes. All right, up next, Akane Banashi, Volume 7, Yuki Suenaga, Takamasa Moue series. You really should just be reading at this point already. It's fantastic. It's lovely. It's remarkable. It's absolutely just a beautiful piece of work. Um, probably one of the best series to be coming out of Weekly Shonen Jump right now, and uh, definitely worth your attention as well. So go just go check it out. I don't even need to tell you anymore. Just go read it. Just go read it. Up next, I managed to pick up volume 23 of Jujutsu Kaisen from Gegu Akatami, or Gege Akatami. Crazy that this series is now almost officially over. It's kind of weird to say that out loud, but um, yeah, happy to have this volume and hopefully uh, this, this arc ends because I'm so tired of it, to be completely honest. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the current Jujutsu Kaisen uh, print arc. Uh, we're currently in the middle of the Colin game, which I'm just not a big fan of. I don't like how the storytelling um, it really bounces around by to too many different things going on. It's kind of hard to keep track, especially if you're reading it just by print. Um, so uh, hopefully this series, this uh, specific thing, ends soon. All right, up next, picked up the last volume, technically, of Boruto, Maruto Dex Generations. It's crazy that this series is technically over. Um, this is from Masashi Kishimoto and Mikio Ikemoto. I don't have much else to say about this. This series was so whatever. It was fine. It did its job, I guess. Um, and yeah, I have the last volume until we get blue whatever vortex. Um, so definitely interested to see if that's any better than this. All right, up next, managed to pick up the fifth volume of Nura Rise of the Yokai Clan from Hiroshi Shibashi. This is an older series that Shonen Jump used to print. Uh, we have the full series in English, which is, I just didn't pick it up at the time because I actually wasn't a big fan of it at first, but I've grown to like it a lot. I think the visuals are really, really cool and has some really just beautiful art. And I'm a big fan of like yokai stuff, I'm not gonna lie. I fall for the exorcist stuff every single time. So I'm super happy to have this and uh, we'll hopefully continue reading it soon. And now in terms of early releases, I managed to pick up Sakamoto Days Volume 13 from Yuto Suzuki. Probably one of the other best Shonen Jump series to be coming out. It's absolutely fantastic. It's balls to the wall, unbelievably intense, super goofy and silly, and I do love it a lot. So happy to have this, and uh, if you're not checking out this series, you really should. It's a fantastic Shonen series. And last but not least, I picked up the 16th volume of Chainsaw Man from Tatsuki Fujimoto. Uh, yeah, happy to have this uh, because I've, I've been like mixed on Chainsaw Man. I, I've been, it's kind of like a roller coaster ride. This entire series feels like a roller coaster ride, not gonna be, uh, not gonna lie. It's like sometimes it feels like it's really, really great, and other times it feels like absolute garbage. And I don't know how I feel about currently with part two, but um, yeah, interested to have the 16th volume and continue reading this series. And that's going to be it for this pickups video. Did you like everything that I picked up? Uh, have you read anything that I've picked up? Or are you going to be picking up anything like this? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, also, let me know what you are picking up right now because I'd love to know what you are also reading and picking up because I might be interested in reading that stuff as well. Um, let me know in the comments below for that as well. And you know what you do? You can you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. Those are all amazing things. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you to HField for being a um, member. I appreciate you. Your support means a lot. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.